John, son of Zechariah and Elizabeth of Judea, here on this day by order of Herod Antipas the Tetrarch, you are hereby sentenced to death by the head of the tribes of the Bible's rated R. It's, it's real life it's is real, what it it's is. It's real life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. We're going to react to season four, episode one of The Chosen. Let's go. Zechariah, shalom. Elizabeth, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So good. Zechariah. Uncle. Ooh, <laughs> can't talk. She's like, what? <laughs> he can't talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's like you call him, oh, he, he can't, can't talk, talk right, right now. now. Oh, that was good. Look at his, look at his face. Look at his, he's not look happy. screen grab that face. He's like, he's not happy. He's tired of I can't talk right now jokes. <laughs> he's not. He's like, you know, six months in, he's right. tired of it. <laughs> That's not her first time to use that. I love that when she calls, Miriam calls, oh, man. and then it says in the scripture that she was filled with the Holy yep. Spirit. And yep. she, she's like, Whoa. you know, and the baby's kicking, you know, I yep. love, that was good. I love this portrayal of these two because they look the part. Yeah, they're older. <laughs> when was the last time you saw an older right. pregnant woman? Yeah, it's like bizarre looking. It, it is. Yeah. It's like, I like it's it. crazy. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you among mm -hmm. women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Wait, how did you know? Ah, I suppose nothing should surprise me anymore. Something different <laughs> than that has happened. That was good. So humbling. Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come Did the messenger to me? tell you about me? When I heard sort of voice, just the sound of your greeting, my baby leaped for joy. And blessed are you who believed there would be a fulfillment from what was spoken to you from Adonai. So a messenger did tell you about The messenger that. came to my husband. Zachariah said, I don't believe Maybe it. Maybe just slow down a minute. You're in no condition to be losing your breath. The reason Zachariah could not speak with you is that he did not believe the message from God about me. I wasn't sure it's first either. I feel bad. He has to go through this. But I must admit sometimes. I don't mind the quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is fun because, like, the Bible is full of miracle births. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I mean, it's from beginning to yeah. end, it's miracle births, yeah. you know? Totally. I mean, it's even kind of a Adam was theme. a miracle birth. <laughs> like, <laughs> Eve, For sure. Eve was a miracle birth. For sure. But then, of course, yeah. uh, you know, Abraham and Sarah, mm -hmm. I was just thinking of that, like, she laughed and she didn't respond right, uh -huh. and then yeah. Zechariah yeah. doesn't respond. Right, uh, you know, but it's like this is the story of Scripture, and mm -hmm. so the New Testament, Yeshua, John. Mm -hmm. This isn't inconsistent with what happens in the Old Testament. Totally. There's complete continuity totally. of these miraculous births. <laughs> yeah, and and one of the cool things, especially if you read Luke's account. The first couple chapters, or maybe first two chapters, mm -hmm. it's like it's like chock full of supernatural stuff. That's true. Like angels right. appearing to people yeah. and yeah. miraculous birth, and it's like it's it's just one after the <laughs> other. I mean, Joseph has like three encounters with an angel. Right. Mary has one, and then my and messenger. That, that right. Like, that's kind of interesting language they're using. It is. It's like it personalized. Is. Like, oh, my messenger. What, you know? How do you feel about that language, messenger? I mean, I think it's great. I yeah. think the. What I like about it is that in Scripture, angels mm -hmm. actually don't have wings. Right. Yeah. So, and usually when we think of angels because of, mm -hmm. you know, middle, mid uh, evil art and stuff, mm -hmm. they're like these big white right. uh, robes and, yeah. and wings. and Either that or like tiny babies with harps. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Cupid, you know. But... I mean, the seraphim and cherubim, they have wings. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying there aren't angels that have wings because I don't sure. know everything that's going on in the unseen mm -hmm. world. Sure. But there are more human, mm -hmm. how they're described. Right. And so I think by using messenger, it feels different. It's true. Yeah. It feels more personal, relational. Yeah. And I mean, God's sending them a personal message. Mm -hmm. So it is pretty relational and for sure. And very human in that sense. So I kind of like it. I kind of like it I too. I mean it's still supernatural obviously. For sure. It reminds me of uh Abraham's encounter with there's two angels and 
Yeshua. Right. Right. You know, it's like angel they, of the Lord. Yeah. They were, they were coming to right. share messages and yeah. impart information and say, Hey, here's, here's what's about to happen. His name will be John. Not Zachariah. Why John? Perhaps he will not be a priest like his father. A different path for God. For that was also told. John will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just mm -hmm. and to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. To prepare the way for... <laughs> wow, I love it. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> Feel it. That's so fun. <laughs> yes. It's like he can't wait to get started. <laughs> mm, that's cool. It's so human. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, I, it's this intimacy. I mean, this, we're talking about the creator of the universe. Yeah. And he's coming down into time and history through a woman. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, you just feel the humanity mm -hmm. when you see these pregnant women. Mm -hmm. And it's happening to them, right? Yeah. And they're like freaking out. <laughs> and so excited. Right? Elizabeth, she's like, and and he's going to prepare the way. And, mm -hmm. and she's quoting Malachi mm -hmm. and like turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, the yeah. children to the fathers. And, you know, it's like... That's my boy. Right. She's already proud. He hasn't even done anything yet. That's so good. I love this portrayal is like, I feel like it's top notch. It is. It's, it's good. like top notch because I feel like you could read, you could read the beginning of Luke and you could read some of these stories and it's almost like, it's almost like, it's just like you're looking at a painting of like right. holy people doing holy yeah, yeah. things. And it's like, yeah, they were freaking out. Yeah, like, exactly. like Zechariah freaked yeah. out so much that right. he was struck dumb by the right. Lord. It's very supernatural. Like he couldn't speak for right. almost a year. It says in the text about like numerous times that they were filled with the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yes. Right. And so these, you know, in, in the beginning mm -hmm. of Luke, like you were talking about there, there's these long mm -hmm. uh, blessings yeah. and a me and they turn them into songs mm -hmm. and liturgy over the centuries. Yep. But they're not just them shooting from the hip or something. No. It's like the Holy Spirit is speaking through them and it says the Holy Spirit came upon them, yep. and filled them up. Yep. You know? yep. So it's really uh, miraculous in so many different ways. Yeah. And go! That's my God. That was too early, wasn't it? Take the measurement. It se seemed it. It seemed a little off, but yeah. That wasn't so difficult. No. Says the interest. guy sitting in a chair. Not yet. Do it one more time. The bow. The whole dance, from the top. My queen. You heard me. It must be perfect. I think if you're the chosen, this is a difficult one to have to portray. Mm hmm. Because it was probably pretty sexual, mm -hmm. and but how do you like? This right. is a Bible film. What do you do? Kids I mean, are watching. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. So I think they did a good job for what you know. Right. Within a parameter, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but Salome is an interesting person. So mm -hmm. her name is not mentioned in the Bible, mm -hmm. but most people know her name. Huh. And. She's mentioned by Josephus by name. Huh. Uh, that it's Herodias's daughter. Okay. And so, but then she's actually from Herodias's first marriage. Right. To Herod Agrippus's brother, mm -hmm. Philip. Philip. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that means uh -huh. it's, it's Josephus is correct yeah. that Salome is actually. Herod's niece, niece, mm -hmm. or half niece, or something. Yeah, you know, at least like, yeah, a niece, sort of, right. like, sort of relative. Yeah, and definitely his wife's daughter. Uh huh. Which yeah. is which so is, it's his niece and his daughter, which is creepy weird. I mean, it's just the whole thing is just kind of messed up. It ain't right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember one pastor growing up from the pulpit saying, "Yeah, the Bible's rated R." Yeah, and I was kind of like, 
oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He's right. right. You know, so it's 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 real life it's is real, what it it's is. It's real life, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but we had Raymond's back. How did you hear that? We hear everything. This is what we do. <laughs> and we also know that if she's back, Thomas would like to see her. He cannot be alone with her. Oh, the, Barnaby and I will chaperone. Uh, she's in the mission house. Ta-da. Did you catch that she said Tora? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm seeing him hearing it. Like, I mean, you're, you're hearing like Adonai, uh-huh. Toda. Like they're, Your they're Hebrew really... is improving. Is that what you're saying? No. No. <laughs> I'm not saying that. So, But that was, I, I'm recognizing right. it. I'm like, oh, hey. That's, that's good. That's cool. That's great. A little Toda here and there. <laughs> toda Reba. <laughs> How we say it here in the Midwest. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> Barnaby is too much. <laughs> He's so funny. I, I, I want to hang out with him. I don't think that was in the script. I think I he think was so. just like... <laughs> yeah, her grabbing him? Right. That might have been ad-libbed. <laughs> Let's just be sure to have a good time tonight and... And? And nothing. Have a good time. Cooperate. Regardless how the evening goes, let's... Have a good time. Collaborate. What is this about, Chusa? Hmm? What do you mean? I just want us to have a good time. And... You are not a good liar. I think he looks like he's related to Will Ferrell. That's it. <laughs> I was wondering why he looked familiar. <laughs> it's like Will Ferrell's older brother. Yeah. You know? uh, <laughs> oh. The whole time I keep thinking he's going to make a joke. <laughs> you know? And he's just a jerk. It's not a right. joke, it's a jerk. Yeah. Yeah. You're uh, right, though. Mm-hmm. That's funny. It's Bill Farrell. <laughs> You're not a good liar either, Joanna. We know you've spoken privately with the baptizer. What does that have to do with anything? Who sent you to talk to me? No one. Never mind. I just wanted my wife to... Don't say have a good time again. We both know that since you met Cassandra, you don't care about that. Is Herod doing something with John? No. No. Herod finds John entertaining and interesting. You know that. Yes. And I know that it would be unwise for him to do something rash when the people consider him a prophet. She's in the court of Herod. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And so she's most likely the witness to John's death. Wow. And that whole scene. You know, it's kind of like, well, how do we know what happened? Wow. How do we know? I never, I never put that together. Yeah. I mean, and there could yeah. have been other witnesses, but, but we know, yeah. like, she ends up being at the tomb. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. we know she was wow. a disciple and would have been communicating with, mm-hmm. you know, the early apostles. Wow. I never, yeah, I never thought that, like, you know, I had to get the stories from and compile the stories right. from somewhere. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, she was most likely there. Right. Oh, that makes it even like heavier for some mm-hmm. reason. Yeah, because the Herodian court, these are all Jewish people. Yeah. This isn't Rome. Right. Right? Right. So she's a part of, Mm -hmm. and her husband here, Mm -hmm. this is the, it's kind of like a kangaroo Jewish court ruling party, right? King Herod. Mm -hmm. This Herod here is Herod Antipas, and he's actually Herod the Great's son. And his relationship to Rome is he's the, technically the tetrarch over the Galilee Mm -hmm. and Perea. Okay. And Perea is east of the Jordan River in the Dead Sea. Hmm. And Macaris, which is here where uh, John is imprisoned, hmm. is on the east side of the Dead Sea. Hmm. And it's one of the fortresses that Herod had built, Herod the Great had built. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of these kind of summer fortresses, kind of okay. like Masada. Which is on Herodium. the west side, right? Yeah, Masada's okay. on the west side. Yeah. Uh, this is actually like the eastern front, and it was very fortified, Macaris. Mm. Okay. So it, the only other fort that's fortified more than this was Jerusalem. Oh, wow. Uh, so this is kind of it's like the eastern front, if you will. Okay. Uh, Which is modern-day Jordan on exactly. that side. Okay. Right. So, so here's a 
rendition of what Macaris probably looked like Whoa. by the archaeologist who excavated here. Huh. You can tell it's right on kind of the side of the, the yeah. cliff there. Wow. It's and like one so, way in, one way out type of place. Yeah, huh. so it's a it's a fortified mm-hmm. eastern front that was really protecting Jerusalem. Hmm. You see the lower part of the fortress there, mm-hmm. which is where they think John was imprisoned. Wow. And then here's another recreation huh. of kind of like the main palace of Macaris. Wow. And they actually have a hall and a royal courtyard here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even where, you know, most likely this uh, infamous wow. Salome dance actually happened. Wow. So this is a very legitimate archaeological hmm. Um, you know, kind of evidence of yeah. the accuracy of Scripture wow. uh, is what they found at Macaris. Wow, that's really cool to see. Where it's at, I mean, I've, I've been to the Dead Sea, so I've been, like, mm-hmm. you can see it, you can feel right. it, and and I don't know, like you're saying, it's, there's there's archaeological evidence that this is where this took place, right? right? And so that that's just... Right. That just makes it so much fun. And it doesn't say Macaris in Scripture, which right. is one of the reasons why... You don't have that yeah. visual, yeah. but Josephus, the <clears throat> first century Jewish historian, mm-hmm. he's the one that actually mentions it. He's also the one that gives uh, the the name to Salome okay, as the it. dancer, and he also mentions that John was imprisoned in Macaris oh. and that he was uh, executed. Wow. So... Uh, and then the archaeology, you know, is newer mm-hmm. discoveries that mm-hmm. have taken place. And so that's why many people haven't seen these uh, perspectives yeah. of what it could have been like. Yeah. And then also that they don't know about the name because they haven't read Josephus, right? Super fun. I mean, hashtag Bible nerd. Like, yeah, that's right. This, exactly. This is like, <laughs> that's good. This is the fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if you like our videos, become a Grafted Ambassador to help us make more videos and you'll get our course for free. You can hang out with us on Zoom every month, and you'll even get a free hat. Come on, click on the link in the description below. And even though I'm living radically different than before, I just can't stop seeing how we could be doing things faster and more efficiently. Were you asked to run it more efficiently? No, just to keep the purse. And keep the purse. But Z, I like it. All the people he fed in the capitalist they weren't all poor. Some were just far from home with nothing to eat. If, if we had taken up a collection of just 10% of the 5,000, 10%, accepted a fraction of people's offerings of gratitude, those who could afford it, we wouldn't be in such dire straits waiting to do important work until revenue kicks in from Zebedee's olive oil. If he wanted to take up an offering, he would have, but he didn't. I like how Z, mm-hmm. Simon, uh, is saying, hey, did he ask you to do that? I do too. And then immediately he's like, yeah, but blah, 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 blah. It's like, that's kind of like, you know, when you're trying to help somebody and they're ignoring your counsel. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what he's doing. For sure. <laughs> Not me. I always take your counsel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I believe we are ready. I'm sure you are. We must make sure that Salome is. Go, lead us through it one more time. If I may, we are pushing her too hard. We must rest her before. It must be perfect. We must overwhelm him. I will do it with drink. You will do it with her performance. My queen, I know the baptized I insulted you, but they are insulted. Insulted. Do you believe my marriage to the king is wicked? Of course not. I... Do you believe I should be returned to that pauper Philip in his meager Judean territory? And give up my marriage to Antipas, who rules the entire region? No, my queen. Well, no. Perhaps I should just ignore this little insult and allow for the entire region to publicly rebuke all of my decisions? I apologize, my queen. I would work with Solomon right away. So Herodias here is obviously offended by John calling her out for her sin. Right. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, but, which happens when people are in sin. You're right. They're not <laughs> usually like, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. You know? uh, at least people that don't love right. God. Right. Uh, yeah. But what's really, this is no minor manner. This is a, actually a big deal hmm. historically. Hmm. So she ends up, right, divorcing mm-hmm. 
Philip. Yeah. And then uh, Herod divorces his wife as mm -hmm. well. Right. Who was a Nabataean princess. Oh. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So this is, so Petra is just in this region mm. as well. Mm. Uh, east of here is the Nabataean area. Okay. And so when he divorces her for Herodias, her father, mm -hmm. who was like the Nabataean, mm -hmm. you know, king. Yeah. He's not real happy about I'm that. I'm sure. Yeah. And it leads to a war. Whoa. With Herod Antipas. Whoa. And he gets absolutely defeated and shamed hmm. by the Nabataean king Aretas. Really? So this is no like small minor event. No. This actually, this whole thing leads to a regional war where Herod ends up looking like an idiot. Well, I didn't know any of that. Yeah. That is so interesting. It's like better than a, you know, soap opera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's such a soap opera right. happening at like the highest level yeah. here that leads to war. I mean, the war is wow. because of <clears throat> sexual immorality. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Breaking the Lord's commands and yeah. sexual immorality. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. John, something's happening. Stop. John, there's a plot. They're going Stop. to kill you. The blind see. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. The poor have good news preached to them. No. No! The hearts of the fathers are turned to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The way of the Lord is prepared. Done my job. Well, extra biblical, but but very biblical. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. mm, like you said, the way of the Lord is prepared. John mm -hmm. did his job. And the one way to say it is, he became who he was created to be. Oh, that's good. Right? Yeah. yeah. That was his intended destiny. Yep. Was to prepare the way of the Lord, mm -hmm. and he was saying, "I did, and became." Mm. I mean, that's really cool if you think about it in those terms. I mean, then Yeshua says what? There's no man greater yeah. in the kingdom, right? right. Born among right. women right. than John. Mm. Because what? He became who he was created to be. Right. I mean, you'll see, you'll, we see in Zechariah's little psalm once his mm -hmm. mouth is opened, right? That mm -hmm. this is what was prophesied. Right. right. And, you know, you could have discussions about, you know, whether or not, you know, the will of man, the will of God. But mm -hmm. John was obedient right he was obedient right. every step of the way yeah. and, and you see this you see this like bit of a wrestle right when mm -hmm. he sends his disciples mm -hmm. and he's like hey are you the one that's to come right. like yeah and that's but that's what he was quoting there is right. what yeshua said yeah and he's like okay but from the beginning from yeah. uh, this miraculous birth exactly too and then it says <laughs> in the text that after this miraculous birth that he was sent into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And then we don't hear about him again until what it says that actually he's coming out of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that passage in Isaiah yep. is that he's preparing the way of the Lord in the wilderness. In the wilderness you know? <laughs> so, I yeah. mean, talk about being who he's created to be yeah. from the very beginning. From the beginning. Yep. It's this calling, mm -hmm. this set-apart calling mm -hmm. to really prepare yeah, everyone for the Messiah and this repentance necessary. Isn't it interesting? There's mm -hmm. there's repentance necessary to even prepare for the one who would make a way for our yeah. repentance. Yeah, it's like yeah, talk about the need for repentance. Yep, you know. Yep, and remember, John says, you know, they're coming out to him to be mm -hmm. baptized, and then he says, you know. You get away from me, you uh, brood, brood of vipers. vipers. Yeah. And he says, Show me your fruit worthy of yeah. repentance. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, well, what, what is he talking about? Well, mm -hmm. there's a reference there to this holiness highway. Yeah. Right? He's saying, You need to live a certain way to show yes. that you're truly repentant. Yeah. And not just saying one thing mm -hmm. and doing something else. For sure. I mean, that was Yeshua's critique uh, mm -hmm. of the religious leadership. It's hypocrisy. It's just, yep. 
They're not even trying to do the things they're right. saying. It's one thing that, of course, we all fall short. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Right. But it's when you're not even trying to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what you're supposed to be doing and what yeah. you're saying. Right. That's hypocrisy. Yep. Yep. And because he even, he even says, Jesus even says at one point, he's like, do what they tell you, mm -hmm. but don't do what they do. Exactly. You know, he's like, they're whitewashed tombs. Exactly. So like, watch out. Right. Watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees yeah. because that's the hypocrisy that gets in right. you. And it's right. a mess when it does. Yeah. yeah. And the word hypocrite there comes from the word for actor. Mm. And so right. it's because you're pretending to be something mm -hmm. that you're not. Right. And that you don't want to be. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. So he's, he's getting back always yep. to the heart. For so. sure. I truly love you, Rayma. There's got to be some way to make this work. I was hoping you'd say this. <laughs> you would? Of course, I have an idea. You do? I've carefully researched every detail, every rabbinic tradition, every minor detail. You did? Mm -hmm. According to the Havaka, in the event of an absentee father or exceptionally uncommon circumstances, which I believe our following of Jesus constitutes, mm -hmm. there is a special dispensation for validating a marriage. A male who is at least 13 years old verbalizes the formula, Hare et mikudesh et li, kidat Moshe ve Yisrael. You are hereby consecrated to me according to the law of Moses and Israel. Upon recital, the groom must give the bride some object of value. If she accepts it, she thus validates the kiddushin as a legal act and is designated as betrothed, consecrated to him alone. So, wait, is that it? <laughs> Can this really happen within our faith? It feels right, but is it? I suppose it wouldn't be the first unorthodox betrothal in the history of our people. Esther married a Gentile king to save Israel. David didn't wait for his father to pick his bride. Even Jesus told us about his parents' unconventional arrangement. He could oh, be more... Yes? We don't compare to them, but we do have Jesus to ask. He can decide. I kind of like that part. Okay. Because they're kind of saying... Look, this is unconventional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Meaning, this is what was normal in the first century. Yeah, and they're they're appealing to to <laughs> Esther and to this precedent here, Miriam and Joseph. <laughs> so I see what they're doing right, here. Right, right, right. Some people are complaining that this is not how you sure. know a betrothal would be in the mm. first century. So that's an interesting play there. Yeah, yeah, I think mean, yeah. it's kind of smart. <laughs> did you catch that? I kind of like that. I, did, I wasn't thinking about it like that, but yeah, that's interesting. She did bring up something interesting there at the end is that, you know, he was coming up with all these examples, but you don't use the exception to the rule to make a new rule. So <laughs> she's like, well, we still have to ask Jesus about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good. Dropping. I do appreciate that. I think that's cool. Showing her as a disciple of Yeshua, mm -hmm. and she's saying the prayer that he taught them, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a cool, that's a cool right. add in, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, it, even from earliest, you know, early sources after mm -hmm. Yeshua's death and re resurrection and ascension is that they were praying his prayer yeah. multiple times a day. Yeah, the DDK, you're yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this was something they implemented. Right. So it's, I, I, I like that. I think it's a good touch. Totally. So that's, that's a fun one. We know what happened. <clears throat> right. You know, what, that's what they did. It wasn't just like, hey, here's a here's an interesting prayer and right. then... Mm -hmm. It goes by the wayside. It was right. like, no, this thing, this thing was implemented. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it stood the test of time. Right. <laughs> it was needed back then just like today, right? 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a nice plate. Silver? <laughs> Only the finest. Normally intended for a royal wedding banquet. Requested by King Herod himself. Why are you laughing? I've never been to a wedding banquet. <laughs> but I'm on my way to one. What's that mean? Oh, never mind. 
Mm. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> Are those your final words? Uh. It is interesting here that they're having the Romans are killing him. I was I was just wondering you about know. that. Yeah. So I mean they have a so you know it's an interesting play. So Herod is ordering him to be killed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then there's this question of you know what does he have authority? Does he have authority of a capital punishment? Right. Uh, so he's mm-hmm. not over Judea. So Yeshua's trial and that was mm-hmm. different. He's in the Galilee, right? Uh, but then it looks like Rome has agreed with him, or something is what they're showing. They're portraying that That's way, what yeah. They're portraying it of yeah. who actually kills him. I was, I, I was going to ask about that because I was like, wait, those kind of look like Roman, mm-hmm. but I didn't know what the garb looked like mm-hmm. for maybe some Jewish soldiers or something like that mm-hmm. so but they definitely had looked Roman so right. that's what they're appearing to be using right. so, yeah. so yeah interesting play like mm-hmm. you're saying yeah yeah I'm, I'm not sure that John's last words would have been you wouldn't get it but <laughs> <laughs> but hey I like the he was like I'm going but I'm going to, to a one. wedding banquet yeah right that yeah. was cool yeah I like that yeah I think I think John would have been able to see the, you know, like the the trajectory mm-hmm. that even though I'm being beheaded, like this isn't where it ends. Right. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. was he was a radical. Yeah. And so he believed in the the coming kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know. Bless it. Are you? Yeah. Bless it. Are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe? I love that his first words are a blessing to the Lord. <laughs> Come on. Doesn't get any better than that. showing that light shining on John. Mm. It reminds me of when Stephen was murdered. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. Because, so, I mean, John's actually the first New Covenant martyr. Mm. Uh, but what does it say in Acts about Stephen? Yeah. That, like, the heavens, the heavens open. were opened and... He sees the Lord. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what yeah. is happening here mm. To John and I think mm-hmm. that almost almost for sure happened. Mm. I mean, if it happened to Stephen, right? I think it's happening to John, to where he's not mm. even probably feeling the pain. Stephen, right? Right. Because I mean, he's he's already got one foot in eternity. I mean, he's yeah. there. He's on his way. And so yeah. I think they're just showing John he's already there too. Right. Right. You know? And I think you know they put the they put the lamb or the sheep in there mm-hmm. and. Something that I, the the words that he says in the beginning of John, where he says, yeah. behold, the lamb of God who takes away the yeah. sin of the world. I Absolutely. mean, he's one of the first to recognize right. this is who this guy is. Right. And this is what he's here for. Exactly. And then the next day he says it again. He's right. like, look, there's God's lamb. Right. Right. And so, so I like what you're saying. And, and I think that's, I think that's beautiful because right. he had eyes to see right. who Yeshua was. Yeah. Even though he knew him as a relative growing right. up, yeah, right, and he's 
his death is foreshadowing Yeshua's death. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's mm-hmm. preparing the way. Right. I mean, he's going before. He's, right. He's An calling for repentance. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, I mean, he's, he's what? The forerunner. Yep. I mean, that's, yep. he's the, the bridegroom forerunner. Yep. Exactly. So, I mean, this is such a foreshadowing of Yeshua. So mm-hmm. I, th- I like how that's why they're bringing in Yeshua too, because mm-hmm. he's even connecting in with yep. what's happening to, you know, his, cousin but yep. then also what's going to happen to him right? right and that also reminds me of revelation mm-hmm. right where it talks about the standing at the right hand of the father's throne was the lamb who appeared to be slain yeah yeah right right so john is seeing this just like stephen was seeing mm-hmm. yeshua at the right hand of the father totally. as he's dying john is seeing what the lamb right. who's right. slain? They're definitely seeing a theme there, yeah. right? And trying to put that yeah. in. It's good, it's, yeah. And they're making this like this topsy turvy, yeah. I mean, roller coaster of emotion, yeah. like this beautiful scene of Elizabeth and John, or Elizabeth and Zechariah, presenting, right. you know, the little baby John, and his mouth is loose right. for the first time in almost a year, and. You know, like his blessing comes out, right. his prophecy comes out mm-hmm. about him preparing the way of the Lord, and right. and then you have this beheading happening. It's like, right. this is this is John's life. Yeah, this is who he was. He was created for this. Yeah, exactly. Which is hard to like. Yeah, embrace right. your calling. It's hard to embrace the yeah. suffering. It's, I mean, even Yeshua, he's like, take this cup from me, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it doesn't mean right. that. I like to say, look if. If everything's going really easy for you, you're probably not doing what you're created to do, right? I mean, it's going to have opposition. For sure. Like, by definition, because yeah. why? Because Satan didn't become who he's created to be, Mm-mm. and he wants to take us down with him. So yeah. he doesn't want us to step into what God has for us. Yeah. So he's going he's gonna to... Bring some opposition, right? Right. I think it's also a great portrayal of when they're flashing back to this this ceremony, right? This would have been the eighth day when he would have been circumcised and his name would be, would, would be revealed. And so they're portraying that, I think, really well and beautifully, mm-hmm. too. It's explicit in the text, but sometimes maybe people would miss it. Like, oh, they're, they're circumcising him on the eighth day. He's a right. Jewish boy right. born in a Jewish family in a Jewish context. And that's in, important to realize. Still happening today, exactly. right? I mean, this yeah. is an ancient Jewish tradition. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, I don't know, but it might be one of the oldest mm. references to eighth day circumcision. Because, mm. of course, the New Testament is a Jewish document. This is an ancient Jewish text. Yeah. You can ask her. Ah, yes. I'm curious about the little songbirds. Lovebirds. It's songbirds. It's always been songbirds. He's talking about that. <laughs> well, I would. How do you go? What? That's really awesome. The the ancient colloquialism. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That's funny is that Leah, my wife, actually has a running list of when I get colloquialism <laughs> wrong. It's true. It's true. This is fact. It's true. Yeah, this is real. That would be like songbird, mm-hmm. lovebird. Yeah. That's, that's serious. She, has, she seriously has hey, a running here, list. Tom, seriously. you can't have your peas and eat them too, okay? <laughs> yes. Mazel <laughs> tov. Did you notice Matthew said Mazel Tov? Yeah, yeah. Not Mazel Tov? Exactly. <laughs> That's that story of living in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And the owner of my apartment was Orthodox. And we were pregnant. And mm-hmm. he's like, Mazel Tov. And I'm like, huh? He's like, he said, bless you. And, no. and he's like, oh, I mean, uh, Mazel Tov. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, so they're doing That's the... Funny. The Israeli totally. Hebrew uh, totally. pronunciation here. Mazel tov. So, mazel tov. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Right. Congratulations. No, 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 no. 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 No,
Well, it's uh, it's John. Are you Philip? No, I, I, I'm Judas. Mm. Get up this way. I'll tell Philip. I'll tell Philip. Okay. John is uh. To show the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham. Please, Andrew. No. Yes. Mm. It just reminds me how all the disciples are, most of them are going to be martyred. Mm. Yeah. And how I like how they're showing Andrew because they had shown earlier in the seasons and, mm -hmm. and in scripture how he had gone out to John. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like that connection with mm. the person then it's so much harder and yeah. Oh, yeah. you know you read it like in the text and it's disconnected mm -hmm. but then when you watch it yeah here and that's i think one of the things that's really good and hard about the chosen is you start to get to know the characters yeah and it reminds me of the band of brothers oh yeah <laughs> where the yeah. what's hard about the band of brothers is it's like four hours mm. long and so you really get to know the characters mm. where most war movies are you know hour and a half or yeah. whatever it yeah. is and so but you everybody would have you know as the disciples went out and spread mm. the gospel it's like mm -hmm. whenever that one particular disciple in your region who was your touch point yeah your your connection to the Lord it would have been like oh man almost like he died yeah over I mean that that's probably too far but mm. like that that's your connecting point, yeah. you know? It's like that when people come to faith and you're like, right. whoever led you to the Lord, like mm. your mentor, your father, and you know, whatever it is, that's that's, that's hard stuff. Paul talks about it like, I don't want you to grieve, or I don't want you to mourn like like those who don't have hope. Mm -hmm. But he didn't say, I don't want you to mourn, Right. period. Like, right. But don't mourn like those who don't have hope, right. right? So there's a mourning and there's a grief that's necessary. Right. And yet... Right. We have hope. One of the things that I just adore about the Lord is that he brings to people together that may never have been brought together. Yeah. Before, you know, like yeah. for, for no other reason yeah. than just by the blood of his right. son, we're brought together into family. Right. And and there's this deep joy and connection with that. And 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 yet there comes with grief. Like right. family can come with grief and there and that's real. I go with you. You don't have to. To grant us that we, being delivered from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, you will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God. That depiction of Zechariah is so, so good. good. And one of the reasons it's so good is he's literally just praying yeah. exactly what it says in the text. Exactly. I think that's one of the reasons you feel it so much. That's yeah. just pure scripture right, right there. Holy but, Spirit right. inspired scripture. Yeah. But then they're giving you the context as he's holding the baby oh, on the eighth day circumcision. Yeah. I mean like oh. that's where you feel it because yep. like that's the, the scripture come alive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To me this depiction mm -hmm. of Zechariah and Elizabeth is is Boom. darn near perfect. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's just yeah. 
<laughs> well done, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen. Whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. Mm -hmm. it's so good. And I love how they they give, let you breathe. Because that Zechariah's blessing and prayer there is so deep. It's packed. It's so profound. Yeah. And I love how they like space it out and then they let you kind of like digest it mm -hmm. and then they come back with it and right. then boom. I mean, right. it was, you just, you can feel it. Yeah. It's, it's so well done. I, I mean, seriously. I, I, love yeah, it. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything to add. It's just... I just, it was good. That was good. If you like our videos, become a Grafted Ambassador to help us make more videos and you'll get our course for free. You can hang out with us on Zoom every month and you'll even get a free hat. Come on. Click on the link in the description below. They're getting Bob Ross on it and just beating the devil out of it. <laughs> You're gonna dip this paintbrush. Check it out. Happy the tree. <laughs>